ABS glue, and this type of black pipe is called ABS pipe. while I do the other part. So I'm gonna stand it up like that, just put your hands here and hold it. Good. Good job. Buddy. See, I need to do a little bit on the inside of this. And then I'll take that from you. Thank you. And I'm gonna stick it together. <laughs> and then give it a little bit of a turn. To really lock it. Oh yeah. Oh, did you see how much more I've been on? Okay, really happy with the placement now that I've adjusted it some. I've started so throwing some of this heavy clay, clay soil around it. Might tamp that down some and then call that good. At a later time, we'll build an actual probably cinder block structure around this thing uh, to protect it from soil sloughing down onto it and to insulate it a bit. Here in Oregon, the moderate climate will be really good for the worms. The winters don't get cold enough to be a huge hazard to them, especially if we wrap the tank with cinder block and then kind of rebury parts of it. And the main concern would be the summer. If we get 90, 100 degree days with direct sun onto this thing, you could cook the worms. If you get too hot, worms just die. In the winter, when it's cold, they just slow down, kind of a cold-blooded creature thing where they're not very active, but they're alive. So even in the short term, I'll do something like some kind of cover, some plywood or some scrap roofing and a tarp or something like that to keep some of the sun off of it. But I'm calling it good for the placement. So next steps, gravel going in and that standpipe that I made going in and then on top of the gravel, more of that mesh material to, to stop solids from making their way to the gravel layer. bucket for that back corner you think? Yeah, but what I'm thinking is I'll kind of lay out a, uh, a tank's width with some excess that I can try to tuck into the rock. I'm laying it out. It's 
really cramped in here. For reference, I'm I'm 5'10, 190, 195 pounds, somewhere in there. And I, if I was much bigger, this would not work for me to be in here. <laughs> um, so if you're my size or smaller, great. If you're bigger than me and want to do this, you should find some. Like this, this, this is a job for someone, a guy like 5'6, 140 pounds would be awesome in here. Or girl. Okay, I got two layers of fabric in. I cut a slit to get it past the standpipe, and I just used miscellaneous big rocks or a brick back there to hold the weed mat down. Okay, sweet. Okay, we're ready to collect organic material like wood chips and stuff like that. So I used the excavator and pulled up that rotting stump, so we'll get a bunch off of that. And then I had cut some trees but hadn't gotten around to clearing the brush yet, so might rake up some dead leaves and branches from that. We could even just reek, reek, rake leaf litter and stuff off the ground. We just need a mix of material. According to the, the plans on vermicompostingtoilet.net, I think that's the website, I need to look that up. According to their plans, you need a variety of material from fast decaying to slow decaying. Um, so that'll be good. Ready? Ready. All right. I'm gonna carry those over to the okay. spot. In we go. In goes. So that one's kind of more coarse wood material. And then Tina was finding this is kind of like some wood chips and leaf litter. Alright, I'm gonna spread that out. Here's one of our worm composting bucket systems. It uses two buckets. This bucket is whole and catches the, the worm tea, worm leachate that comes out, the liquid that comes out. This one has holes drilled in the sides and the bottom to let it drain. And we'll show you kind of what we keep in here. So coffee grounds with the filters, banana peels are a really common thing we put in, and I'll dig in. And there's lots of worms in here. So we've had really good success with worm coffee hosting over the years, so I feel really good about doing this because we've, we've had successes and failures with keeping the worms. Yeah. Um, we've had worms drown which was a bummer and really gross because it kind of went anaerobic smell. Mm -hmm. um, so the problem there was the, the liquid couldn't drain through. The, the holes we had drilled, the drainage holes had become plugged up. And so it, the whole container filled up with water and worms can't survive in water. They need to breathe the oxygen, so they died. So think of when it rains, worms, worms come up out of the ground when it rains. And so that's why it's so important that we have that gravel bed and that filter and that the liquid can drain out so that we have a moist environment for the worms but not filled with water so that they drown. And so we're going to just put this entire bucket um, to kind of seed that tank with worms. I can see tons of worm eggs in there, lots of worms, adult worms and baby worms, and a lot of this material they like to eat. So, on the vermicomposting toilets website, it sounds like it would have been ideal if a month or two before we started using this, the worms were kind of getting built up in population in there, but this is a good amount of worms. And if we need to, we can add more. Yeah, we have more buckets of these going. So, I'm going to put these in. You want to hold the camera, sweetheart? You know what, before I do it, 
This material we put in, it was pretty dry. I think we should hose it down a little bit first to make it a little more moist. Okay. And then put these in. Because like, look, the, the home they like is really moist. Yeah, so, that's true. Let me pull the hose over and do that. Okay. Just gonna try to get it saturated. Oh, here's a test we can do. What if I shoot water straight down the standpipe? Yay, it works. All right, water down the standpipe drains. Water getting absorbed by the wood chips does not. And so that's the goal. When we flush the toilet, we want that mat woody material to absorb the liquid stuff that's coming out for a while. And then let the worms process it and only excess moisture comes out. So that'd be awesome. All right, let's put them in. Perfect. All right, oh, worms. worms. Bon You've always voyage. treated us so well. Do a good job in there. Go worms, go. I know, I'm kind of nervous for them for some reason. They'll do great. <laughs> It's they'll a new love job. It. <laughs> it's a new job. It's a bit of a crappy job, but <laughs> they'll be all right. Bonk. In nature, what happens to every cow pie, every animal dropping? We're doing the same thing. It gets incorporated into the soil by worms and other stuff. So. The hooligan noises in the background are the kids playing. Oh, come look at this. So that's kind of the shape of the bucket, and look what happens when I pull it back. Worms, 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 worms. All right, do a great job, worms. There they go. And those little, those little sacks there, those yellowish sacks, that's worm eggs. Fun. Good deal. What's next? Um. So. I've got to make the connection so that if we use the toilet it would flush into this and then I've got to develop the drainage system where I'll make sure it continues downhill and we'll dig a big wide trench area a foot a foot and a half down and fill it with wood chips and woody material again so that that the, the liquid that comes out will be a lot safer than black water but not all the way processed and so we want it down in woody material kind of like a forest floor where you know bacteria worms other bugs will finish cleaning up that water cool. so so yeah i've got the plumbing to do that and we've got to decide on an area right back here for it okay cool it's so pretty back there in green yeah
to make sure they're good. And yeah. so as a reminder, this is gray water. Gray water from the shower, bathroom sink, and eventually the kitchen sink. It's doesn't need to get processed through the worms. It's not sewage, it's just gray water heading straight out. And we'll, um, we'll be careful. We won't be using a garbage disposal and we'll use a screen in the kitchen sink to keep food debris from coming out to try to minimize the amount of solid material coming through the gray water. And we should have easy access to this. If there's ever a problem, we can dig down here and figure that out. Okay, so as far as the worm compost toilet system goes, this puts us in a position where I'd call it fully functional. I'll turn this valve out to let water drain. And we should be good. Now, in the immediate future, the next thing I'm gonna do is make this cover better, more robust to protect it from heat and maybe keep flies out of it as well if any flies are trying to get in it. And long term would be more permanent things like a cinder block structure around it, second tank, things like that. But I want to run it like this for a month or so, get a sense for how it's working and before I do too many permanent things like a retaining wall on the back and things like that see if there's any modifications or changes I need to make before I get ahead of myself with other uh, additions or permanent changes. Hey everybody, it is now January 2022. We've been using this toilet system full time for a year and a half and we've definitely hit the point where it's not keeping up and it's time for me to implement the second tank and divert our waste from the other tank to this one to let it catch up. So what's been going on over there? Um, I mean, the first thing I noticed, we came back from a Thanksgiving trip a couple weeks ago and I opened it up to check it out and saw a lens of standing water at the top. It, it, you know, it wasn't water from bottom to top with, you know, every worm drowned and it's just a, a giant gross um, pool in there, but it looks like there's just, you know, too much waste and toilet paper and stuff that the worms weren't keeping up with and you get a few inches of that and then water can't really get through it. So that tells me it needs a break. You know, could I have managed that system better and avoided that? Maybe. You know, if every month or two I was opening it up, getting wood chips and things and stirring it around, maybe I could have been running it perfectly to maintain it with one tank, but it, it it seems like a family of four or more using one tank full time might really be a push. And we're in mild western Oregon where these worms with some insulation, I think they can work slowly all winter long. You know, if you're somewhere with a even colder climate where the worms are basically going to hibernate for the winter, I don't think one tank would be enough. Which brings up another point though, you know, these might be a better fit for a, a seasonal application rather than a family's full-time home. But for our situation, I'm 
really confident that get the second tank going and it'll be more than enough capacity. So that's gonna, what I'm gonna work on now. Things I'm thinking about setting up the second one, the, um, the opening that I did for the first one was, you know, only about a foot wide. This time I'm gonna get the opening more like a foot and a half wide. What I've learned is when I've gotta do maintenance in here, say I'm using a pitchfork and getting wood chips and things in here, I, I, you need more room than I have with this one because especially with the with the frame that I built around it, it's an awkward angle to get in there with a pitchfork when it's a small opening. I've drilled the holes in the new standpipe that'll go inside the tank. I tried to really make sure I drilled plenty of holes to improve drainage over the previous one. And I've got this same weed block drainage fabric that the last one has. The one thing I'm going to do different is I'm going to make sure I don't wrap multiple layers of this on. I'm just going to do one layer around and um, hopefully that makes it drain into the pipe better as well. Alright, tank number two ready to go. I added a cap be simply because when you add r rough material like wood chips you're trying to dodge accidentally throwing it down that standpipe. Got the weed block with drain rock underneath there. Use three inch drain rock and just used some some roots that he got ripped up and a couple rocks to hold it down. Now it's ready for material. Sticks that have been rotting on the ground for a few months or longer, you know, years for that big one down there. And I think one of the things that has gone wrong in the other one is I haven't had enough big coarse material like this to really create pockets of space for liquid to move down and through which is going to be a better environment for the worms and for the system to work. Okay, I've got the piping mocked up for tank number two. And I wanted to show you this part because I got to have some adventures in IBC tote threads. The, the other tank, just a standard American two inch um, pipe adapter worked Th this piece that's in my right hand sorry it's hard with the camera to get them both but um, the the valve coming off of this IBC tote had European threads and so my standard two inch adapter that worked on the other tote did not work on this one and so I got to dive into the fun world of different European threads and it was a big pain but long story short, I found on eBay a guy selling adapters that will fit that 3 inch outlet on the bottom of the tote and go to 2 inch male, you know, NPT I think it's called, American Threading. And then now this comes out as 2 inch ABS and I'm good to go from there. So I wanted to show you that because if I was paying attention I had a few other totes and I could have just made sure to use a tote with a valve that already had two inch. This time I don't even have a valve but it doesn't matter. When you operate these things you're never going to close this bottom valve because you'll drown the worms if you do that. So it's fine to just have it coming off like this and then I've got everything cut and set up to drop down and come back and uh, and so I'll get that all set up and I'll do, I'll dig that pipe a little lower and then do the same thing we did over here with rocks. And then I've also got some piping where I'm going to solve this issue of all this water buildup and stuff. What I'm going to do is specifically our gray water system. I'm going to dig a trench through here, put some drain rock and perforated pipe and drop this, drop the gray water, spread it out way further back here. And then it'll only be the vermicompost liquid coming out closer over here, and that'll help. Uh, that'll help this area from becoming so boggy. So that's what I'm going to be working on, and I'll come back when I've got uh, some trenches dug and that kind of thing. There's a good ball of worms. There. So that's what's downstream of our gray water. So that's a great sign. Worms are busy and healthy, so 
Let's move some of them in. And so all I've got is a bunch of sticks in here right now. So later today when we're done doing this, we should throw some of our... <laughs> Tina slipping and sliding. <laughs> <laughs> we should throw some of our coffee grounds and, and different things like that to give them more to hang out in, in here. And then very soon, within the next few days, I'll swap the plumbing over and actually we'll start using this. Um, but yeah, the mother load. <laughs> All right, I've got drain rock going for the gray water side. Now I'm starting to just dig away a little more of this clay, try to expand this kind of wood chip basin that receives the water coming out of the vermicomposting tank. So I'll get rid of a little more of that clay, spread some wood chips out. I'll install this drain pipe here and then put a little more um, rock over the top of it, maybe, or maybe I just put fabric. I'm not sure, I'll see how much room I've got. But this is the home stretch to getting this all tidied up. I'll do some more rock where the exit pipe comes there. I don't want to block it with anything other than rock. Initially we had tried putting some fabric there, but it just catches sediment and stuff and becomes a point that can gum up. So I'm just going to put rock there. Okay, Tina came back so she could hold the camera. <laughs> um, I've got the perforated pipe in there and I decided to put a little bit of that drain fabric on it because we have a little bit left. And I'm just going to add a little more rock to it. I don't think I'm going to fill up the whole trench, but I'm going to add some more rock to hold that in place and then recover these wood chips, probably bring some fresh wood chips. We've got a few piles of wood chips we could pick from. so. Let's see how it goes going straight on. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with this tank. I didn't film it last time, but just to hide the bit of tank showing down here, well, to hide it from view, but more importantly, block light from getting to the worms. The worms prefer full dark. We've got this wet red sticky clay right here where we've been digging, so we just stick it right to the tank and to itself. Um, I don't know, might seem a little redneck, but it's kind of fun working with clay like this, and it, it does its job, and that, rather than worrying about some expensive material that can handle ground contact, just sticking clay to it is kind of fun. Get in there, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> all right got some wood chips dropped and then spread out here nice thick layer ready to be a nice soaking zone and I threw wood chips in here so now there's worms there's wood chips there's a lattice of branches in there We'll probably bring some more branches in over the top of it and then uh, in the next few days get this plumbed in and switch our, uh, our toilet to flow this direction.
Okay, we have rerouted our sewage pipe to drop into the second tank. I simply cut it off and 90'd it there and 90'd it there, and it, it follows a, a, a downslope the whole way, which is the important thing with sewage pipe. And then we're using this landscape fabric and sealing up any openings because when we first installed it, that first summer, we saw little gnats, little bugs flying around in and out, and we did not want that. You don't want gnats flying down to your poop and then flying around elsewhere. So that's why you see us kind of sealing it up. We're not trying to make it airtight, we're trying to keep bugs out. And then we've just got random scrap insulation around from projects we've done. And so I'm going to try to fill up every surface right here with insulation because you know you want to keep the worms above 50 degrees if you can and you definitely want to keep them below 90 degrees if you can and insulation will help with that so otherwise we're good to go and now we'll kind of check in on this new system I'll probably set my calendar for a month and every month for a while keep an eye on it and then add more material as needed and I'm also going to keep an eye on the old system and see how the worms do. And I'll probably do a, a video update between six months and a year from now. To, because one thing I'm really curious about is, you know, how much volume will be reduced? Because this thing's full to the top. It's full to where sewage was coming out. That's why it became urgent to switch it over. And so I'm curious how much volume we gain by the worms eating that material down. And I think what I might do is every few months hose it down because the worms, as they're eating everything, they're making stuff water soluble, but nothing, no water is going to be flushed into here anymore. So I think I'm going to hose it down every few months and see if that helps bring the volume down and help the worms work through it. And then long term, I think somewhere between every six months to a year, we're just going to switch it back and forth. This time I didn't glue the ABS fittings. I just press fit them and I think that'll be fine, but I'll keep an eye on it and adjust them if I need to. But my idea is simply going to be to, you know, disconnect it and then reconnect the other connection that drops straight into here, you know, once or twice a year. And I, with two whole totes, I think it's more than enough capacity for us. So that's the state of it. And, um, We'll keep you updated. Feel free to ask questions and I can answer them in comments and or I can make a follow-up video of with answering a bunch of questions. What do you think, Tina? Dirty work. <laughs> you excited to poop in this one instead so, of this one? So excited. <laughs> Can't wait. It's a whole new world. It's unbelievable. <laughs> we'll have oatmeal and coffee for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> Okay. All right. Goodbye. <laughs>